Okay, hello. So today I'll be going through the first part of an overview of electrochemistry. So this part will be focusing mainly on electrochemical cells, also known as galvanic cells. So the core chemical concept involved in, in galvanic cells, right? In fact, in the entirety of electrochemistry, are is redox reactions. Redox reactions can be broken up into two processes, right? The first process is oxidation, right? The loss of electrons. And these electrons are taken in by the species that is reduced, right? Where the species that is reduced gains electrons. So one reaction that we can consider and that we'll be using as a sort of an example for the rest of the video would be the reaction of zinc and silver 1 ions. So if you were to dip a piece of zinc in the solution of silver 1 ions, this displacement reaction occurs, right? Which is a redox reaction, right? Zinc gets oxidized, silver plus gets reduced. So normally this electron transfer occurs in the solution, right? So elect so zinc dissolves to form zinc 2 plus and then the electrons go to the silver which precipitates out as a G. Correct? So this electron transfer occurs in solution. However, if you could somehow cause this electron to travel in an external circuit before being transferred to the silver one, right, being reduced, uh, we could actually cause these electrons to do some productive work, right? Imagine you could channel these electrons through a circuit, light out a light bulb and a uh, I don't know, maybe a power speaker, a loud speaker or something, and then before going back to the silver uh, one, right, that could be very useful indeed. So how do we do that, right? So we don't want the electrons to be immediately transferred from the species being oxidized to the species being reduced. So let us first separate the oxidation and reduction part of the reaction into what we call two separate half cells, okay? So uh, the zinc half cell is here, so zinc, to Zn2 plus occurs in this half cell, then the electrons right go into this to this electrode and then go to Ag plus to form Ag. So it's the same reaction, right? The same species is being oxidized, which is zinc. Uh, the same species is being reduced, which is the silver one ions, right? Just that now the electrons that go through an electrical load thus doing productive electrical work right however what do we notice you notice that after a while right there will be a build up of negative charge over here you got negative charge species are going to this oh gosh this I cannot change the color can you change it like this ne a positive charge will build up here because this side is losing electrons negative charge will build up here so what happens right any electron that tries to leave this, uh, this half cell will be attracted back any electrons that try to enter this half cell will be repelled. So there will soon be a stoppage in the electron flow. That's not good because what? Electron flow maintains the uh, current through the circuit, right? Thus maintaining the work. And so, sorry. Okay, now let me see if I can change the tool. Yes, I can change. I, I erase this. We now have a salt bridge, right? Connecting the two half cells. So there is positive charge here, negative charge here. But it's okay because the K plus and the NO3 minus in the salt bridge can migrate to opposite sides of the electrons to neutralize the charge, right? So the charge is neutralized and electrons can once again flow freely. So we know that water flows from high ground to low ground. Similarly, conventional electric current, right, which is normally denoted by the symbol I, right, in units amperes, flows from high potential to low potential. And since we learned in primary school, right, that conventional current denotes the flow of positive charge, right, and electrons are negatively charged. So electron flow is in the opposite direction of conventional current. So electron flows from low potential to high potential. So correspondingly, this would be Right, since the electron flow is in this direction, this will be a low potential and this will be a high potential. So the zinc electrode has a lower potential than the silver electrode. We cannot measure the absolute potential of the zinc electrode easily, but we can easily measure the difference in electrode potential by connecting a voltmeter between the two half cells, right? And this is what we're interested in. The relative difference between the potentials, which is the potential difference, is what determines the current flowing through the external circuit by the equation V equals to 
I, uh, but of course this is not a physics lesson so I won't go too much into these physics equations. If you can use a convenient electrode define its potential to be 0 volts, all cells can be given a potential value calibrated to this electrode, which is the difference between a potential of the cell being tested and the standard 0.0, .0 volt cell being connected together, right? And chemists have decided this cell to be the standard hydrogen electrode. So a standard hydrogen electrode represents the equation H plus combining E minus to form H2 gas and how this electrode is uh, constructed is it has a platinum electrode so this is the one that connects to the voltmeter and to the cell that we want to uh, test right and we pump in H2 gas and there is a solution of H plus so this allows uh, the uh, reaction to proceed either ways right so if over here the potential is higher right electrons will flow out and then uh, what we observe is also H2 converting to H plus, we oxidize to H plus. If over here the potential is lower, electrons flow in, right? Then what do you observe? H plus being reduced to H2. So we give them the freedom of, of uh, it being going in either direction by the presence of both hydrogen gas, in the, which is the uh, reduced form, and uh, H plus, right? Which is the oxidized form. So, however, we want to ensure that chemists from all over the world, right? A chemist from Malaysia, a chemist from Singapore, a chemist from China, they are all measuring the potential of the same cell. So, we define all standard cells to be constructed under standard conditions, right? Which is one more per dm cube concentration of all ions on both hand sides of the equation. So, for example, a standard cell measuring the potential of uh, this equation of uh, Fe2 plus, uh, Fe3 plus plus E minus to form Fe2 plus, right? The concentration of Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus in solution must both be 1 mole per dm cube. So it then corresponds that the concentration of H plus in the standard hydrogen electrode is 1 mole per dm cube. 1 bar partial pressure of all gases. In this case, there's only one gas, hydrogen gas, so at pressure 1 bar. And at the temperature of 298 kelvins. Okay, so the more positive a potential of a cell, the more likely it is to take in electrons, right? Correct, and the thus the more likely reduction takes place there. The more negative the potential of a cell, the more likely it is to release electrons, and thus the more likely oxidation takes place there. So what does this potential mean? When I measure potential relative to the standard hydrogen electrode, this potential I'm measuring, chemists have come with a name for it called the standard electrode potential, which is the values of E, E naught rather, given in your data booklet. Correct, E naught in your data booklet data booklet so uh, an another name therefore for the standard electrode potential is the standard reduction potential why because the more positive the value the more likely a reduction takes place right so the half cell wave reduction takes place the case thought is at a higher potential than the half cell wave oxidation takes place which is at A node hence the total cell potential which is the potential difference between the two electrodes is given by the uh, the standard electrode potential of the cathode minus the standard electrode potential of the A node. So an example of calculating E cell, the zinc and silver galvanic cell. Uh, first, we need to measure what is the uh, potential of the zinc electrode with respect to the standard hydrogen electrode. So in other words, you are finding the standard electrode potential of the zinc and Zn2 plus half cell. So we connect, we realize that electron flows in this way with uh, the zinc electrode we, we can say that the value of the volt voltmeter is 0 0.76 volts right voltmeter normally shows the absolute value but we do know that the hydrogen electrode is 0 0.00 uh, volts and by the use of an meter we know the electron flows in this direction and so we can say that this has a more negative potential than 0 volts with its magnitude being minus 0 0.76 volts so the standard electrode potential of the zinc 2 plus and zinc half cell is minus 0 0.76 volts then now we need to find that of the silver electrode so we connect it together with a standard hydrogen electrode and we realize that the voltmeter gives a reading of 0 0.80 volts with the electron flow being from the standard hydrogen electrode to the silver electrode so what does this mean this means the silver electrode has a positive higher potential right therefore attracting electrons and thus it has a uh, the silver silver one half cell has a standard electrode potential of uh, zero plus 0 0.80 volts 
Therefore, ECR is the cathode, right? This, this will then be the cathode, right? Because it's the higher uh, standard electrode potential. The cathode minus the anode, so minus minus, you become a plus. So it's plus 1.56 volts. So the overall reaction is just a combination of the reaction that happened in each of the half cell, right? So getting this. So if the above reaction is favorable in the galvanic cell, that means if you connect uh, If you connect this and realize that uh, this reaction, right, uh, pros this reaction proceeds, this reaction proceeds, right, describes what happens in the combination of these two half equations. Oh, I almost forgot my salt bridge. Okay, so it follows that it also be favorable in the so-called normal redox reaction where the oxidizing and reducing agents directly react together rather than uh, being oxidized, being oxidized and being reduced in separate half cells. Hence, we can use E cell to predict favorability of certain reactions, right? Uh, so, or rather, uh, because we do not have the, uh, we do not have the uh, the standard electro -poten the electro potentials and the non-standard condition, we normally use E not cell, the standard uh, cell potential to predict the favorability of certain reactions. So these are all E not cell values. So is this reaction favorable? Uh, I2 plus 2Cl minus Q2I minus plus Cl2. So to do this, the E not cell of this reaction is the E not of the cathode, which is the minus E not of the A not. But because right, uh, the, there's no really a cathode or A not here, cathode is where reduction occurs. So we can write it as reduction minus the oxidation. So uh, which species is getting reduced? I2 is getting reduced, so it's plus 0 0.54. Which species is getting oxidized? Uh, chlorine, so plus 1.36. And you subtract the two values together, you get minus 0 0.82 volts, which is less than 0, and thus it is non-spontaneous. However, the reverse reaction has a uh, inox, inox cell value of plus 0 0.82 volts, which is spontaneous. Thus, you say that iodide can reduce chlorine, but I, a chloride cannot reduce iodine, which is consistent with what we learned in secondary school about halogen displacement reactions. However, there are certain limitations, right? Feasible reactions with E not cell greater than zero, or even E cell greater than zero, may have too high activation energy and thus a very small rate constant. In addition, uh, E not values are, are for standard conditions. So, so this is for standard conditions of uh, concentration of Cl minus concentration I minus concentration partial uh, sorry the partial presence of Cl two and I two they are all under standard conditions right all ionic aqueous ionic species are uh, concentration one mole per dm cube or gases partial pressure of one bar so if these standard conditions deviate uh, we need to uh, know whether the reaction become more or less favorable which brings us to the next section which is E values E values without the not what does it mean without the not this under non-standard condition you've got the not stands for standard condition so without the not E values under non-standard conditions so let's say we have an oxidizing agent accepting an electron to give a reducing agent with the E not being measured under standard conditions if a change in condition results in the position of equilibrium to shift to the right E will be greater than E0. If a change in condition results in a position of equilibrium to shift to the left, E will be less than E0. And uh, what about E cell? Use the formula E cell equals to E cathode minus E A0 to find the overall effect on E cell. So uh, let us take a look at this electrode now, uh, I mean sorry, this uh, electrochemical cell and realize that this is not standard condition. Right? In fact, uh, why? Because standard conditions, right? Uh, Ag plus should be one more per dm cube, but now it's point one more per dm cube, right? So uh, we know that the E cell is E cathode minus E A node, which is the E of the uh, of the cathode. This is the cathode, right? Where reduction of silver one takes place minus E A node. The zinc is the A node where the oxidation of zinc occurs. So how does the electro potential of the above cell differ from the standard electro potential of plus one point five six volts, which we calculated earlier, right? The answer is there is a lower concentration of Ag plus compared to the standard conditions, right? Task for the equilibrium, this is the equilibrium representing the value of E0 uh, uh, of the cathode. Correct? 
but then uh, the position of equilibrium lies more to the left this time now because there's a lower concentrate AG plus so E K thought is less than E not K thought since E cell equals to E K thought minus E A not E cell is less positive than plus 1.56 volts okay so I hope that this video has been useful to you next uh, video I will go through the overview of electrochemistry part 2 which will be on electrolytic cells so I'll see you then later